Morning. A fine day brewing in uh, South London today. I, I've got uh, something in mind. I've just sketched out uh, just a few little lines here. Memory of Bodmin, Bodmin Moor in northwest Cornwall. We've been through it, well, the edge of it many, many times on our way to Newquay with our camping trailer. In fact, we were there last year for a couple of weeks and on the way, on, on this A30, before we get to where we turn off to New Airport, there's a, a lack of some ponds in the hills. Now, Bob is not mountainous, it's, it's hilly rather than anything else. But I'm just going to make a, try and make a painting out of the memory of it. It's not going to be accurate in any way, shape or form. It's a painting of hills with some fields maybe. Or, or not, the, the hill around the pond that I'm thinking of is quite close, you can't see much beyond it. But I'll, I'll just work away and see what happens. So, usual palette, which has been soaking, or yeah, in my stay wet palette. Thanks, Maria. Uh, Maria's a very, very fine, fine watercolour painter. Maria Kellner, have a look at her stuff on, on, uh, on, on Google. She's got a gallery, and it's marvellous stuff. I'll work the paper all over, and as I progress with this channel, I discover that more and more subscribers are very, very fine artists in their own right. Uh, we've got Smoothie, who's producing some lovely, lovely watercolours, and Maddie's getting more confidence. Maddie Thompson, she's got a YouTube channel now, but she hasn't yet made a video, but she's published some of her stills, and she's shown great promise. Really good. I don't know a lot of people on my channel are my age, coming up to my age, take up art later in life. As I, I, I took it up in my 20s, it's a long time ago now. But uh, I've had a lot of pleasure out of it. And it's very frustrating for those all those efforts you do make where you're doing rubbish. I've been through all that, I still do rubbish. And, Quite often, don't worry. You don't see everything, uh, and you just work away until you can do it. That, that's all I can say. It's it's not a great you know ability. Oops. It's uh, just a willingness to begin and continue and don't quit when you can't do it, because there will, will come a time when you can do it. Just, oh dear! I keep meaning to clean this board. It's got so much colour on it underneath. Uh, let's just try that off a bit. I hope you had a lovely weekend. Right, that, that'll do. Right, I'll, so I'll, lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paint grey, and burnt sienna. You don't have to use them all, but I'll just put in my usual wash of burnt uh, raw sienna. And that pond will reflect a bit of sky, maybe, and, and mostly what's behind it. Right, okay, so let's put in a sky. So, a bit of blue, a bit of red. shadow just a bit of cloud. I'll do, I'll reclip the paper. As you can see if you're new to this, wet in wet watercolour pa painting, you don't need to stretch your paper but what you do, wet it and reclip it as, it's, as it grows, as it will grow. <coughs> and unless you're working on say 200 pound weight, this is 130 quite light, this is Fabriano, very good paper for wet in wet. I haven't really experimented on doing some dry work. I looked at the watercolour that my friend's got across the road. Give me a swig of tea. There's a little doodle I did, oh, 20, 25 years ago. And I was just using wet and dry paper, just bits of wet. I just, you know, a bit of wet here, a bit of wet there. So that when the, the new paint hit the wet, it just spread and then stopped. 
Uh, experiment with your watercolours. And it's a cracking little painting of trees and, and, uh, and water. And so simple. And I look at it, I think, I oh, wish I could do it again. Right, now, um, I'm going to make these hills look a bit more distant than they actually are. So I just use those colours, but thicker because you, you've got some wet on the paper. So let's just hills rather than the mountains. So I'm make, making more landscape than sky on this one. Now we'll have a bit of nice lemon yellow under there. Bit of sienna in there, just warm up. Where you've got that margin or that line, that borderline, just go over it a little bit and hopefully it will create a, a bit of mist. Now we'll have a, a, a nicer green, so we'll mix a bit of Payne's grey in with a, that green, a bit of sienna. No, I don't want to go too low because that pond is going to be there. And I want some scrubby trees, the usual. <coughs> I'm catching the light now, this lovely lemon yellow. I'll put a few little rocky things in because there are bits of rock showing, but there are in my landscape anyway. Let's go around here, a bit of. Pretty yellow, catching a bit of light there. Okay, so get some nice burnt sienna in there now, I think. Burnt sienna, a bit of yellow. So a warmer, warmer green. A bit of, bit of grey. So there'll be gorse and all sorts of stuff in this. Now I'm not not copying anything, just just straight in with a paint. But you can if you want to use reference material, do so I do. But at the moment I'm just enjoying painting from my mind, from my head, from experience really. I think after all these years you think I could make something up. Right, now now I'm going to put in some bit of rock, so to do the rocks you need a bit, bit of darker paint, just here and there just Otherwise, you, you won't, when you scrape it out with a card, it just won't show. I'll take that card. I will stretch the paper again. See, now the paper is perfectly flat. There's a road going around here but in my memory, but I don't want to put a main road in. So just, just some interest, it saves painting. This is rocks coming around the... There we Right, now we've just got the details to do. So we want some greens. But warm greens, so burnt sienna, lemon yellow, Payne's grey. Oh. Oh, 
I'll put some thin trees, sparse trees in there. But it is more land and you don't get forest anymore and now moors anyway, you get to just small copses, wind blown. See what I like? Putting the darks around the rocks. So you can mix the brown and the yellow, the burnt sienna with the yellow. Just adds some interest in the, in the foreground and fills up a lot of space. And we let the viewer put in the detail. We just, we just hint at it. My lemon yellow is still um, tube consistency because it's been in the bag since more or less Saturday when I put it out. I think I put it out Friday on the pallet and then covered it up with an airtight bag and to keep the whole thing moist and it's, it's done just that. Okay. Uh, so, um, I'm going to do a bit of the uh, stuff in this now. It's just drying off a little bit, so we can put some some bits of detail, but it'll be very light. Um, Just a bit of blue, a bit of yellow. And something here. This needs to be a bit warmer as we come to the uh, to the foreground. A nice just bit of yellow in here. Just. Right, bit of dark now. I'll use blue in with the burnt sienna. Oh, I forgot my tea. So what you've got are clumps of, of grass. Like rabbit burrows and all sorts of things texturing this, this landscape. So we, we're not doing any portraits of anything, we're just, just covering up, just putting flicks of interest in. And I will put some detail in, but some trees. Let's get some warmer clumps. Okay, so we're going to go in with the more browns, or warm colours, shall I say, browns, or some burnt sienna, bit of red, bit of red, bit of grey, but warm darks. See, the blues in the background, the warm, Siennas and reds in, in the foreground 
So that will give an impression of the warm coming towards you and the blues going off into the distance. And the good dark is, is um, Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna. Get a bit of green in that. I'm going to put a reflection in here when I've done with the background. I'll rewrite the paper to do that. Some put sienna in there as well. Okay, so now we're going to get some nice darks in the shadow there. So grey, brown, yellow. So this will show up as a sh in the reflection. I'll put the shadows in on these bushes here. So what I'm trying to do is create an impression. Um, if you get a bit of mystery into it, even, even better. But I think mystery is something that comes as largely with happy accidents with the watercolour painting. Sometimes the, the actual technique flatters produces effects that you didn't anticipate and the, the problem is not overworking you think oh that looks good let's do some more and in the end you ruin it so a nice bit of dark warm just to anchor that foreground over the rocks here a little bit okay now I'm quite pleased with that let's just put some Grass is coming in to this here. Okay, wash my brush, just finish off my cup of tea. Then we'll do the bit, bit of reflection. I'll dry it off. Uh, and I'll, I can put some figures. It's, it's, it's changed into a to a road, a, a, a dual carriageway going through the edge of Bodmin into, into being right on the moor itself. Wasn't necessarily my intention, but anyway, I'll take your head, headphones off. I'm just going to dry this off here. So what we've done is to create an illusion of depth on a two-dimensional piece of paper. We've gone from the warm colours through the landscape, less detail, less distinct, going into this blue background here, and that suggests diff distance. Um, right, now I'm going to re-wet re -wet this. And while that's wet, you don't disturb, don't disturb the paint. So get this, get some nice dark reflection. So that's the blue, good, good and stiff, blue and, and and well, just leaving some sparkle on it. Now we want some greens in now. Bit of sheer, we're reflecting the colours that are behind it. Really, whether they're actually accurate or not. And then I'll put in some blue. 
control of the sky or the background. Right, that's the best that I can do there. I think maybe just a little bit of darker stuff on that horizon of that pond. Okay, now I'll dry that off and I'm going to put some harder stuff underneath it. Give the sort of gorse that you would get. Clumps of gorse and clumps of thistle. So nice stiff green. More your lemon yellow. See the lemon yellow is still the tube consistency. I might leave my palette open for a while for it to dry, then I can spray it, the dry paint, with a spray of water and seal it. Right, now I'm going to put a bit of, I, I need to make some of this a bit stronger here. So I'm going to just use some nice stiff green. Just So this gives a bit of a focal point. By the time I put some, some twigs and stuff in there, it get a bit darker. Brown, yellow, grey. So really good dark greens. Okay. I'll just go up a little bit higher with this one here. This is the sort of effects I got when I, when I was explaining earlier. I'll, I'll have a go at one later, maybe, while this is uploading, with just using the paper. See how it gets on. And just paint on dry paper, using water to drag the paint all over the place. Uh, I think I need to do a bit, a bit of strengthening up there. And just drag it into those reflections. So, Right, I'm not going to do any more to that. Uh, I'll dry it off. And with my rigger, and some dark. Because these are in silhouette, these uh, trees. So it's all painting into the light. Branches will go sort of horizontal as well. Yeah. Oh, they just show up a little bit.
Right, they're just some struggling trees there. I've put some some flicks. Just some flicks. <coughs> um, I was going to put some figures in there, but I don't think I will. <coughs> um, I know what I could do. I was thinking, I could put some sheep in, just put them in with a bit of uh, gouache, white gouache. But I don't think I will. Uh, let's put in some. I'll sign it and we'll have a look and see what it looks like in, in the blue mouth, I think. Right, so what we've got here is this simple landscape. I know that I make it look simple because I've done so many of them, but it's just making something out of nothing, really. As uh, I've said before, uh, to repeat Edward Wesson, bags of damn all. So there we are, we've, we've got a very simple moorland scene, more, more landscape than sky, but I love skies, I do them very easily, very quickly, and it saves me painting complicated foregrounds, but here we've got a more complicated foreground. But kept very simple in the distance, recession is all important with landscape painting, going from warm colours to, to blue colours, but avoid overworking, I've overworked a bit there, probably a little bit here and it's very very hard to resist the temptation that a little goes a long way so um, I'll bring you around and I'll zoom, I'll zoom in so let's go across the pond there I've tried to show those reflections by, by putting sky colours and background colours in the water but it wouldn't be white because it's surrounded by a lot of darker landscape. So let's go across here. There are my scrubby trees. All very simple. And I've left a lot of sparkle on the paper. A lot of unpainted bits and pieces. This happens as you complete this part of the picture. This soaks, all the water soaks in. By the time you get to it, it's, it's dry. And then you get this lovely dry brush effect. I can hear Freddie meowing. Oh dear, can you hear that? He comes, come on Freddy! He hasn't been on camera for a, for a few weeks. He's, he tends to go out a lot with his friend Elsa next door. And now he's six months, he's terrorising all the other cats. Oh, here he is. Come on, Fred. All right, here's, come and say hello, Fred. Come here, come here. Because he's, he's, he's a full size, almost full size. Hello, mate. Right, here we go. Here we go. There he is, there's Freddy. Say hello, Fred. He's a, just a lovely cat. Lovely nature. Independent as all cats are. But he's just a joy to have. There you are, Freddy. Hello, mate. Ah, oh, we're very lucky to have him. He's a really lovely, lovely cat. But he has to take his chances. We leave him free to go now, come and go. Got a nice lot of gardens to play in. Always try to get out on the road. We discourage it as much as we can, but he can get over any gate or fence now. Right, so there we are. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed Freddy, probably more than me. Bye for now.